Yes, it must have been quite strange just uh, watching the camera move around and the crocodile. But uh, my name is Taylor and I'm going to be the river lady today. So you're just going to listen to the sound of my wonderful voice and we can make water-like sounds because we don't have any sound on the river cameras, which is a pity. Well, actually, I think we could be quite lucky today because it looks a bit windy out there, doesn't there? Now, first thing that you can see, of course, is that there is a yellow-billed stork moving around the water looking for things to eat. And it's been not uh, on the cooperative side. It started off in the out in the open, beautiful, and now it has decided that I'm going to go and hide away behind the grass. And that's the only tuft of grass that um, that we, well, we sort of see, big, especially big grass, and covering quite a bit of the water. Silly little bird. Anyways, we actually had a really amazing sighting the other day, you may have remembered, where we were quite fortunate. We had a variety of bird species. We had African spoonbill. We also had then two yellow-billed storks. And one was obviously a male, and one was a female. And we were talking about the pink tinge. Uh, that comes about in breeding season and sometimes comes about with birds that feed on certain things. But that was not showing any of that pink tinge. Let's see what else we've got around here. There are a couple of little birds. Should we see what those ones are down there? Now, this is, this is interesting playing on this camera. I, I try and play a little bit every day. Sometimes it gets a little bit stuck. There we go. We've got some little three-banded plovers. And we've also got a little crocodile. Hello, little crocodile. Now, ooh, there's a question from Fuzzman Sparkles and wondering if I've perhaps added the open bill stalk to my list. And no, I haven't yet. I've also been looking out for the abdomen stalks. Uh, they look quite similar to the woolly neck stalks, but um, no, we haven't. But maybe if we go and visit some of the marshy areas, and after all the rain we've had, it could be a very productive area. Uh, just the other day, I was having a, a little squiz around one of the marshy areas quite close to Little Governor's Camp. And, oh my goodness, I can't tell you the amount of birds that were there. There were cattle egrets, there were black-headed herons, there were grey herons, there were little plovers and things running around, there were lapwings, most certainly there were lapwings, there's always lapwings. And uh, you can name it, the list is honestly endless. I think I added about 15 birds to my bird list just in one go. So that could be something quite exciting to do. Now, we're quite lucky. We get to watch these little three-banded plovers almost every single day, and not just from here in Kenya, but also from down in South Africa. And they're entertaining little birds. I remember I found a nest down at Chitwa Dam, and unfortunately, I think that nest must have got um, trodden on because it just kind of disappeared. I went back and checked for it on a number of different occasions, but unfortunately, I couldn't find it. So I'm quite happy that I get to watch them here, and this will be... I think this is the joy of the river cameras is that we just need to figure out where the birds are nesting and maybe we'll get to see crocodiles nesting and I was asking about um, well, I was asking if anyone had actually seen a crocodile uh, prepare its nest and it would be nice to do the same thing with watching these birds how they prepare obviously when we're uh, driving around in the big vehicles unfortunately we, we we miss a lot of the things we're so high off the ground but sitting from these cameras first the we're really not intervening with these animals at all. They don't even know that we're here. Besides, when the cameras were installed, now they just go about their lives. So to be able to witness things like this will be really, really spectacular. I don't think I've really ever seen a ground-dwelling bird other than an ostrich prepare a nest. Um, they're, they're not too secretive about the way that they prepare their nests. And then, of course, we see a lot of the, the birds uh, that nest in the trees. We see them carrying twigs and, and recreating their nests. But it would be nice to see these little ones. Now, they'll just make a little scrape, just like the blacksmith lapwing would. Probably not in a little island where it's feeding at the moment. That would be a bit too dangerous. The water levels could rise and then flood it so you might find that they'll go to the edge of the main bank and probably anywhere between 50 and 80 meters away from the water's edge they'll probably make a little scrape there isn't this beautiful though oh now you flew away i can't keep up with you oh there you are now roshni you're wondering if i've seen the teeny tiny crocodiles no not yet and 
you know where I've been looking out for them though, and because I did see one the other day in a crossing quite close to Serena, maybe a crocodile about the size of the one that we were just was just popping in and out of frame. And they like to, you know, move away from these main river systems, especially when they're not being cared for uh, by their mothers anymore. Uh, they'll go off, and it's quite dangerous living in the river. You know, we see mass drownings with wildebeest, with the zebras too. Now. Um, little crocodiles could get washed around a bit, imagine getting trampled in a stampede, and then there's obviously a lot of bird life at the river's edge, so the saddle-billed stork, the yellow-billed stork, the goliath herons, they're all going to be snatching up little crocodiles, so it's a dangerous area. So they might move to these smaller little luggers, these marshy areas, and live out their lives, uh, and hopefully try and stay hidden. So we'll keep checking those areas because um, I'd like to see some really tiny crocodiles. I think the ones I've been seeing are maybe just over a year or so. But we'll keep looking and searching the river's edge. Who knows? Maybe we do find ourselves a little crop. Tristan, however, is not with an animal that's little. Exactly, Taylor. These are quite large and, well, very gentle, though, not quite as aggressive as the crocodiles.